Uh, but we can proceed now. And uh, today's topic is hydropower. So, what is hydropower? Hydropower, or uh, in other words, water power, is power derived from the energy of falling water or fast running water, which may be harnessed for useful purposes. Historically, uh, people used hydropower for many activities. Uh, for example, for irrigation or uh, for the operation of various mechanical devices, such as uh, grist mills, saw mills, uh, textile mills, trip hammers, dog cranes, uh, and others. Also, it was used for powering a very interesting device. It's called a tromp. It's a water-powered air compressor. Uh, which was commonly used before the uh, advent of the electric power compressor. Practically, it's uh, somewhat like an air pump, but working in reverse. In the late 19th century, hydropower became a source uh, for generating electricity. And the first commercial hydroelectric power plant was built at Niagara Falls in 1879. And since the early 20th century, uh, the term hydropower was, has been mostly used uh, in conjunction with the modern development of hydroelectric power. So how does it work? A typical hydroelectric plant uh, is a system of uh, three parts. Uh, it consists of a power plant uh, itself where the electricity is produced, a dam, uh, that can be opened or closed to control the flow, and a reservoir where water is stored. Uh, here you can see uh, an example of a simple uh, water power plant. So the water behind uh, the dam flows through the intake and pushes against the blades of the turbine, causing them to turn. So the turbine spins, uh, and uh, it rotates a, a generator anchor to produce electricity. And the amount of electricity uh, that can be generated depends on how far the water drops, if it drops, or how much water moves through the system. Uh, I want to draw your attention uh, to the, you can see it uh, in the left, uh, the left part of the picture, head pond. Uh, that is a very important uh, parameter. It varies and it basically uh, influences how much water can be pumped through the intake. It is different for different power plants. I will talk about that in detail uh, a bit later. Sorry. Uh, so hydropower has its advantages. Uh, it's uh, once a dam has been built and all the equipment uh, installed, the energy source flowing water is practically free. It is a clean, a clean source renewed by snow uh, and rainfall. Hydropower plants can supply large amounts of electricity. Truly. And also, hydropower plants are relatively easy to adjust for uh, demand by controlling the flow, the flow, sorry, the flow of water through the turbines. Uh, but also, hydropower plants have certain disadvantages. For example, dams can really disrupt uh, river ecosystems and surrounding communities, harming both uh, wildlife and local residents. Uh, for example, uh, when a dam, one of the biggest, I'll also talk about it later, in the world was built in China, more than 1.2 million people were moved from their home places. 
Uh, also, dams prevent fish, salmon, for example, from swimming upstream uh, to spawn. So the presence of hydroelectric dam can often change migration patterns and hurt fish populations. Uh, also, hydropower plants can cause low dissolved oxygen levels uh, in the water, which is very harmful to river habitats. And uh, decaying organic material in reservoirs uh, releases methane, uh, which is a greenhouse gas, uh, which in turn com contributes to the global warming. Uh, but those negative effects can be mitigated. For example, environmental impacts of hydroelectric power can be, uh, any, anyway, it's lower than burning fossil fuels. Small hydroelectric uh, plants can take advantage of existing water flows and existing infrastructure without building new massive things. Uh, special water intakes and turbines can help make sure that water releases, uh, released from a dam is being aerated. So it's being uh, uh, it consists more oxygen to address the problem of low and dissolved oxygen. Uh, also, dams can be planned more strategically to allow fish passages, uh, for example. And also, research continues on the ways to make hydropower projects more uh, environmentally friendly. Presently, there are more than 150 countries uh, which get electricity from hydropower in the world, uh, and 33% of those are uh, within the Asian Pacific region. There are, the, there are five largest hydropower uh, producers in the world. It's China, Brazil, Canada, the United States, and Russia. Uh, the electricity, hydro, uh, electricity production in China skyrocketed in 2000. You can see it uh, from the figure. Uh, the largest power plant in the world is uh, Three George, George in China. Uh, which is located uh, on Yangtze River, and uh, the dam is 2.3 kilometers wide and almost 185 kilometers high. Uh, let's talk a bit about hydropower in Iceland. Presently, uh, more than 80% of uh, electricity in Iceland is generated in hydropower, uh, hydro, hydroelectric power stations. Uh, the largest power station is a uh, US dollar hydropower station, which produces uh, more than 690 megawatts of energy. And uh, all the hydroelectric power stations historically run by the same company, Lance Virkin, a central uh, to the existence of Iceland as an industrial country. The national power of uh, power company of Iceland, Lance Virkin, uh, presently operates 15 hydroelectric uh, power stations, and uh, it is one of the largest producers of uh, renewable energy in Europe. Let's talk briefly about power plants, uh, hydropower plants in Iceland. The largest one is a uh, Flotia Dollar hydropower plant. Uh, as I mentioned, it produces 690 megawatts uh, of electricity from six turbines. Uh, and it can produce 4,800 gigawatt hours annually. The station was brought online in, in 2007, and the dam consists of five 
thesis, uh, and it is the uh, largest of its type in Europe. So the total lens is 700 centimeters, and the uh, head is 193 meters. The total head, I mentioned before, is impressive 599 meters. The next one is Burfell Hydropower Station. You can see it on the picture and where it is located, the south of Iceland. Uh, it was brought online uh, in 1972 and totally refurbished in 1988. Uh, it took almost 10 years to complete the building. And uh, the power plant delivers 270 megawatts of energy and uh, it's able to, pro uh, to produce 2300 gigawatts per an uh, annually with, uh, with a flow rate of more than 300 cubic meters per second. The total head of the station is 115 meters. The next one is uh, Blanda how, how, uh, Hydropower Station. It was uh, launched in 1991 and it's located in the north of Iceland. Uh, it's remarkable that this power station is an underground plant located approximately 230 meters below the surface. Uh, since 1981, the power company of Iceland has cultivated around 5,000 hectares uh, at an altitude of 400-600 meters around the area. Uh, so the capacity of the plant is 150 uh, megawatts and it's able to produce 910 gigawatts hour annually with a flow rate of 60 cubic meters per second. And the head of that station is 284 meters. Uh, Sigalda is the next power station. It is smaller. It is located not far from Reykjavik. Quite old, it was launched in 1978. And it has three uh, 50 megawatts turbine. Uh, this pallet capacity is 150 megawatts. It can produce 120 megawatts per hour, hour annually, with a flow rate of 260 cubic meters per second. Uh, the Rockfield Dam is nine, uh, 925 meters clad with asphalt and 40 meters tall at its highest point. Stoptarangi Hydropower Station uh, is one also is, is located not far from Reykjavik. It was built in 1999. Uh, and it's remarkable by the fact that it utilizes the flow of two rivers. So it's not a uh, it's less sensitive to fluctuations in river supply in comparison with other stations in Iceland. Uh, the dam is the uh, longest in Iceland. It has 6.1 kilometers. The capacity of the station is 125 megawatts and, uh, and uh, the station is able to produce more than 1,000 gigawatts uh, hour annually with a flow rate of 320 cubic meters per second. Uh, the level head is 44 meters. Burfell 2. I spoke about Burfell. This, is, this station is new. It was open uh, last year. It's not uh, very big, at least yet. It can presently can produce uh, 100 megawatts, but it's going to be able to produce 300 uh, uh, gigawatts per uh, per year with a flow rate of 92 uh, square meters per second. The level head of the station is 110 meters.
Bithouse Power Station. It is smaller. It was launched in 2014. Uh, the head of the station is just 40 meters. It can produce 95 megawatts of energy with a harness discharge of 280 square meters per second. And the energy uh, is estimated as 525 gigawatts hour uh, annually. We have one more. What's now hydro power station? Uh, this power station went online in 2001. Uh, and it generates uh, electricity during the peak demand uh, in winter months. The capacity is 90 megawatts and uh, its hydraulic head is 67 meters. The dam length is 730 meters uh, and its height is, is 30 meters. Uh, there are some smaller power plants uh, in Iceland. I'm not going to talk about all of them. You can see the list in the left. Uh, the blue marks are locations of those stations. Okay, some conclusions for this lecture. So the cost of hydroelectricity is relatively low making it uh, uh, its competitive source of renewable energy. For, uh, for example, as soon as the infrastructure has been built, it's practically free. Uh, and once it's constructed, the project produces no direct waste. Uh, so, and uh, mostly has a considerably lower output of greenhouse gases than uh, other, like for example, fossil fuel powered energy plants. And in Iceland, uh, over 80% of electricity is produced by hydroelectric power plants uh, and new are being built. Uh, that is it. Thank you very much.